Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. And this is uh, another teaching today. I've got a, uh, uh, a couple of uh, passages uh, in uh, 2 Peter uh, to discuss. It's talking about uh, false prophets and false teachers initially, and uh, then we'll skip to later on in the scriptures. I hope uh, I just pray that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, would be with me and uh, and uh, give us illumination on these words. Um, so, uh, chapter two says, "For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit." So then. Uh, goes on to say, but there are also false prophets among the people, even as there are false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. So um, I, I have uh, been witness uh, to people uh, preaching uh, the... Um, Hyper grace message, and they teach that um, that all has been done and uh, it's it is finished. And uh, they quote uh, Jesus on the cross, saying everything uh, for salvation has been finished. So they don't uh, believe in a continuing work of a Christian. They don't uh, believe that a Christian should uh, work out his salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, they don't. Uh, agree that uh, a Christian uh, should live a righteous and holy life. Uh, they uh, believe that any uh, works uh, are works of the flesh and they, they don't believe that uh, you can do anything to inherit salvation. They believe that uh, when you said the sinner's prayer, that's fine. Um, some of these false teachers of hyper grace even go on to say that uh, Jesus uh, taught the law at a greater level. And uh, I heard uh, one of them say that uh, Jesus taught the law on steroids. And I asked him, I said, did you really say that uh, we don't need to obey Jesus? Uh, I, did you really say uh, we don't need to obey Jesus' commands? And uh, he brought up the, the command of Jesus about cutting your eye out and cutting your right arm off. And she, he said, how can you obey that? And uh, I said, uh, that means something different. And he said, well, uh, all of Jesus' commands are like that. And you don't have to obey him. So um, these people have uh, brought in destructive heresies. And where it says, even denying the Lord who brought them, they bring on themselves swift destruction. Um, uh, the way that they, they deny the Lord, they, they say that, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, but uh, they deny the teachings of the Lord. They deny the central message of the Lord. They deny uh, what Jesus said you need to do as a proper Christian. They, they're so uh, far convinced that uh, you don't have to do any works to inherit uh, salvation, and uh, they uh, deny the Lord. They deny the Lord's teaching. Uh, you may wonder... How could uh, how could Christians uh, get to a point uh, where they say that it's only Jesus' death on the cross that saves you? It's not uh, by any righteous acts that you do. They believe whenever you're trying to act righteously, uh, you're uh, doing works, and uh, they're fruitless works because they don't count for anything. Um, and uh, that's what they believe. And uh, I believe uh, this is uh, what uh, James was, uh, uh, Peter was uh, t talking about and uh, and prophesying there. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way the truth will be blasphemed. So uh, the truth, the truth is uh, disregarded. The truth of uh, Jesus' teachings is disregarded. And uh, and major portions of uh, Paul's letters and other people's letters are blasphemed 
uh, by uh, by these teachers, and uh, it's a real shame uh, that uh, this happens. It's a real shame that uh, the the gospels uh, have been misread and misinterpreted and misapplied, and uh, it's uh, done by uh, people who teach uh, the hyper grace doctrine. Uh, they teach a half truth. Uh, they teach. Uh, something that's uh, destructive, and uh, and uh, we're we're meant to uh, abide by uh, the teachings of the Bible. We're meant to abide uh, in the Word of the Lord. It's only abiding in the Word of the Lord uh, that sets a person free. Uh, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It says, "If you abide in my Word, and my Word abides in you, you shall know the truth." And the truth shall set you free. So to abide in the word of God, to abide in the word of Jesus, you need to understand what he taught and uh, be obeying what he taught. Uh, verse 3, by covetousness, they'll exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and the destruction does not slumber. So by covetousness, so... Uh, people who preach uh, this uh, popular uh, prosperity doctrine, these people that preach, uh, give to us and, and the Lord will uh, bless you a hundredfold. People who teach that when you have a lot of wealth, when you have a lot of uh, possessions, that's a sign of uh, God uh, blessing you. So they drive around in their $250,000 cars and they have their $20 million houses and they have their $50,000 watches and they have their $15,000 suits. And that's all explained away by um, saying that God is really favoring them and uh, blessing them. Uh, the fact of the matter is Satan can really favor you and Satan can really bless you. And one of the temptations of Satan is uh, for you to own the whole world and, and deny Jesus. And uh, so they, these people uh, Jesus spoke about, uh, these people who teach the prosperity doctrine, uh, Jesus spoke about when he said, these people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So this idea that uh, you can uh, sow to God and uh, give God a portion of your income and then uh, God will bless you and uh, you can keep the blessings and you don't have to share with the poor. You don't have to uh, compromise your lifestyle. You can uh, live as, as rich as uh, you like. Uh, you can spend all, all your uh, money on the lusts of the flesh, on, on the lusts of the world. You can be a friend of the world. Uh, James in James 4.4 4 says, Adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world makes himself enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to become a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Uh, so if uh, you pursue the world and you pursue the world's lust uh, and you continue to do that with a coveting lifestyle through covetousness, uh, you uh, will become an enemy of God. And if you're an enemy of God, I can't see you actually going to heaven. And uh, Paul mentions that covetous is idolatry and uh in Revelation 22, it says uh, those who do the commandments of Jesus enter into the gates, but outside are liars and idolaters. And uh, that's uh, the covetous uh, people. It includes the covetous people. So uh, through uh, promising uh, you uh, that uh, you can have the riches of the world and you can have all these uh, uh, possessions uh, that are expensive possessions, this is how the teachers, how the false teachers, uh, by covetous, they covetous, they'll exploit you. Another way they exploit you is uh, preach a message that uh, you have to give them money uh, in order to receive of the Lord, and uh, so they'll collect all your money. Uh, and this is how they exploit you. Uh, then we're uh, uh, skipping uh, to. Uh, 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 verse 18 
For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure us through the lust of the flesh, uh, through sexual misconduct, through lewdness, the ones who've actually escaped from those who live in error. So uh, it says in uh, Revelation that uh, the spirit of Jezebel uh, will seduce the people and lead them into sexual immorality. And uh, some of these uh, teachers may uh, propose that uh, through uh, lewdness. But um, most of uh, these preachers uh, in the prosperity doctrine, in the Pentecostal church, in uh, mega churches, uh, they allure people through the lust of the flesh. And uh, people are told that uh, they don't have to change. People are told that uh, God accepts them the way they are. Uh, people are told God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Uh, but it's quite a right to sin. So um, people uh, who follow uh, this uh, teaching uh, live in the flesh and live with uh, uh, with uh, often uh, uh, lust of the flesh uh, being part of their lives. But uh, when uh, they're teaching the prosperity doctrine in particular, they lure people through the lust for money, the lust for possessions, the lust for being as good as the Joneses, keeping up with the Joneses. And uh, they uh, they um, speak great swelling words of emptiness, uh, Peter says, uh, that uh, their words are empty, their words have uh, no substance, uh, their words can't be founded on the word of God, the pure word of God, that the words are empty and lifeless and uh, they just promise you things that aren't going to materialize. It's a true uh, statement that uh, the uh, prosperity doctrine works for the teachers of the prosperity doctrine, but doesn't work for the participant. I uh, was uh, going through a book of someone who'd written on seven different subjects. And when he uh, taught on money and finances, he said a couple of times uh, in his teaching that these are the principles, but it doesn't seem to work for me. And uh, I thought that was a really uh, true admission. I'd seen him donate 5 and $10 to me and call it a seed. It's as though he was seeding me with 5 and $10 and wanted a 10 times return. And uh, all this uh, talk about sowing and reaping uh, most of the times comes from prosperity doctrine, uh, pr the prosperity doctrine, and they want you uh, to give to them and uh, they uh, speak great swelling words that promise you the future and promise you uh, great things and they have you uh, give to them, uh, give to them finances and uh, they exploit you uh, through covetousness and uh, that's, uh, that's uh, when uh, you do that, uh, you take yourself out of the kingdom. When you start uh, practicing covetousness, when you start trying to compare yourself to other people and uh, and uh, bringing forth um, a lifestyle where, where you're running after the things of the world, you remove yourself from grace. You remove uh, your uh, candle uh, from being lit and uh, you uh, go into... Um, go into unsteady ground. Uh, verse 19, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves to corruption, for by whom a person is overcome, by him also is he brought into bondage. Uh, so um, the uh, hyper-grace people uh, will uh, promise you liberty. They'll promise that uh, you don't have to live by rules uh, you don't have to obey the commands of Jesus. You don't have to necessarily obey the Bible. Uh, you, uh, you are free. Uh, you're free of uh, doing things. You're free of having to obey rules. Uh, they call people who have rules and ways to live, they call them legalistic. And uh, because they remove the boundaries, because they remove the rules, because they remove righteous living, they teach uh, their followers to uh, go into bondage. They uh, they teach their followers 
uh, to be overcome by sin and uh, they don't uh, excuse it. And uh, this is what uh, Peter's talking about. Um, verse 24, if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and they again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse from for them than the beginning. So uh, you can uh, come under the teaching of hyper grace, uh, coming under the teaching that uh, you don't have to obey uh, Jesus, you don't have to obey Jesus' commands, you don't have to obey the teachings in the letters of the Bible. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to repent. Uh, they say you need to repent from your need to repent. You need to get away from repentance. They don't believe that uh, you need to confess your sins or continue to confess your sins and make yourself right with God. They believe that uh, you can sin any time you like. And uh, because uh, people who listen to them uh, go into a state of uh, feeling free, they, they cuss and they, they do all sorts of wrong things and they believe that they're loved by God and God loves them regardless. They also uh, teach uh, prosperity doctrine and people uh, who follow them uh, go into lusting after the things of the world and consuming the things of the world and heaping up for themselves uh, possessions and uh, fall in love with the world. And uh, this is what happens. Uh, they've escaped uh, uh, covetousness. They've escaped idolatry and they've gone back to idolatry and covetousness they've gone back to sinning and uh and uh this is what uh this verse is saying they for what for if they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord jesus christ they again entangled in them and overcome the latter is worse for them than the beginning uh, verse uh, 21 for it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness that then having to know it to turn from the holy commandment uh, given to them. So the suffering in hell uh, for a Christian, uh, for someone who's formerly a Christian who lived a Christian life and fell back into a lifestyle of sin, the suffering for them is worse uh, because uh, they'll be ruminating on the verses of scripture that are truth while they're in hell suffering, they'll, they'll uh, constantly uh, be uh, reminded of the right way and the righteous way. And uh, as they're burning, they'll realize that uh, they didn't live that and uh, they were a hypocrite and uh, they went against the true teachings of the word and uh, they'll suffer as they burn. They'll know why they're suffering and there'll be a lot of regret. And uh, that's why Peter says, it would be better for them to have no, not to know the way of righteousness and having known it to turn from the holy command de delivered to them. So the suffering uh, in hell uh, for a Christian is fa far worse than uh, it is uh, for an unbeliever. Verse 22, but it's happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed in a wallowing uh, to uh, having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Um, I heard uh, a teacher uh, teach that uh, dogs have this uh, really innate uh, strong sense of smell and a dog can uh, smell unprocessed meat uh, in its vomit. Uh, it can go back to its vomit and can smell uh, morsels of good meat uh, that is unprocessed in their vomit, and they'll go and lick up the vomit. They, they won't be licking up uh, the processed part of it uh, by fun. It won't be fun to lick up vomit, uh, but uh, they, they, their tongues are going after the unprocessed meat so they can swallow it and process that meat. And uh, he said that uh, sometimes when you leave a toxic church or you leave a toxic friendship, there's good elements uh, to that church. There's good elements to that friendship. The, uh, the friend may be funny or the friend may be really wise or the friend may know the word of God really well and you may 
uh, like the company of uh, knowing the word of God through this friend, or you may like the jokes, or uh, your fr the friend who's toxic may uh, spend money on you. There, there'll be some good thing in in that uh, in that uh, unholy soul tie that you have with the person. And sometimes uh, a person will return to a toxic church for those unprocessed uh, pieces of meat, uh, for those uh, good things. And uh, and he's saying here that uh, people escape the corruptions of the world, uh, but sin is uh, good to them, uh, collecting uh, things, uh, collecting possessions, was enjoyable for them, and uh, they did come away from it for a time. Uh, but uh, with uh, false teachers and uh, false preachers, uh, they're encouraged to go back and live that lifestyle of covetousness and go after the things of the world because there's uh, good things uh, in it. Uh, and uh, so, um, so a person can be comfortable uh, back in the sin life. They return. Uh, to their sin life. So I, I hope uh, this has encouraged you today. I hope uh, you've seen some uh, truth uh, in these scriptures and uh, you uh, learned something. And uh, I really enjoyed myself uh, teaching this. God bless.